27th of August 2020. Available on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Meet the Farmers is a virtual summit and business matchmaking agriculture event where farmers meet their suppliers and buyers. So this is how it works. During the summit, crucial matters affecting our agricultural sector will be discussed in partnership with GRZ and key stakeholders during the plenary and parallel sessions. During the business matchmaking, the event brings farmers from all over the country to meet their suppliers and buyers. Meanwhile, the suppliers and buyers will set up their profiles online to showcase products and services they supply or buy. The farmers are then linked to their suppliers and buyers based on what they farm. They meet online using video link on a one-to-one -one and one-to-many basis. Register for free now to secure your place on www.meetthefarmerszm.org. Good morning and welcome to Meet the Farmers Virtual Summit 2020. We are now in Plenary 2 and I hope you have enjoyed the various sessions we have had for you today. In this plenary session, we'll be covering the topic Enhancing Value Chain for the Agriculture Sector in Zambia. As you know, in discussing issues of value chain, we are looking at issues of policy, input supplies, training for farmers and various sector participants. We're looking at farming and improving the farming techniques. We're looking at issues of markets, processing, and of course, consumption. Some of us really love that part of the consumption. To help us to undertake and break down this topic, we have a number of speakers and panelists for this plenary session. Our panelists will take you through the various workshops they'll be leading and the experts who will be undertaking the discussions. Please ensure that you are paying close attention so that you will select the workshop you'll be participating in. Jonathan Mwewa is my name and I'm currently project manager at uh, Musika running a project that is mainly funded by Irish Aid. I have worked in the agricultural sector for the last uh, 19 years now. I think having traversed the, the entire scope of this, uh, this nation. In 2011 we started a, a local organization called uh, Musika uh, where I worked as uh, I think monitoring and evaluation manager up until a couple of years ago when we started uh, the current project that we are doing which is uh, making agriculture markets work for nutrition where I'm working as a project manager. Improving access to uh, markets uh, requires a functioning uh, market system and uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, a market system is basically something that uh, where, which, which brings together different players within the, the, the market that is uh, talking of the core which is the, the supply and demand side where the, the farmer at one time is a supplier and at another point the farmer can be a, a consumer. And of course we do have other support functions which include uh, yeah, the, the, the research and development, you can talk about infrastructure, you can also talk about uh, the rules and regulations that support any market uh, system which include the social norms as well as uh, other regulations that support the functioning of, uh, of a market. In making the, the, the markets uh, the system work, we will require some strengthening of the small businesses that are in the rural areas. These include the intermediaries and the small SMEs because these are the people that are closest uh, to the farmer. And so by strengthening these, we will be able to have a, a system that is going to work for the, for the smallholder farmers. What do I mean by that? These people are closest to, to where the farmers are and as SMEs or as intermediaries they are the people that from the commodity side provide the first level of aggregation of uh, commodities for the smallholder farmers before it gets to the larger, larger scale um, uh, aggregators and also buyers of commodities. Then on the retail side, the, both on the input as well as uh, consumption side, they are the ones that again provide the last mile distribution point. And so if, if by supporting these small businesses, we are going to make the markets work for the smallholder farmers in this current uh, scenario because these are people who are already on the ground. And uh, 
because of that, the private sector becomes very, very critical in this particular time because if we are going to improve the functionality of the markets, the private sector has to play a critical role in improving this agricultural value chain. Good morning. Welcome to the virtual summit for Meet the Farmers. My name is Mukwandi Chibesakunda. I'm the Chief Executive at the National Savings and Credit Bank, NatSave, and we have a strong partnership with farmers countrywide. The National Savings and Credit Bank was formed in 1972, arising from the institution that goes all the way back to 1896, from the financial services sector of the Post Office Bank. The National Savings and Credit Bank has grown to a network of 43 points of representation, 38 branches, five money windows, in all the 10 provinces of Zambia. Over the years, Natshave has partnered with the farmers on the ground in every way. We handle the fertilized support program, we handle food reserve agency payments, and we have a very strong partnership with the people on the ground. We believe that agriculture is the future of Zambia because with agriculture, we have an opportunity to actually change Zambia from just a mining community to a community that is providing food for the entire region. We're very passionate about this and we believe that with the initiatives that are underway, we will be able to get to a point where Zambia feeds itself and feeds other countries as well. So in terms of what we're looking at today, we have a team of panelists who are looking at financing in agribusiness ventures with the challenges and opportunities that are aligned to this. We believe that in partnering with various people in the value chain of agriculture, we will be able to deliver financing for growth and address and mitigate the challenges so identified. Welcome. Balad Mtalezulu. I will be facilitating the session, logistics and the value chain in the agricultural sector. I work for the Andaba Agricultural Policy Research Institute as the Outreach Director. The Andaba Agricultural Policy Research Institute's vision is to see a Zambia free of hunger, malnutrition and poverty through sustainable agricultural transformation. And we do that through the provision of high quality research and outreach services. We provide facts or evidence into the design implementation and redesign of agricultural policy. Our institute is governed by a board of government, private sector and a prominent agricultural business person. My background is that I have been in the agricultural sector, particularly in the agricultural policy arena since 1989, which this year, I'll be clocking 31 years in the same sector. So we look forward to your participation in this Meet the Farmers Summit. Thank you. So my name is uh, John Kunda. I'm the Senior Manager for Corporate Affairs at Zesco Limited. Uh, basically responsible for internal and external relationships. And our strategic relationships with maximum demand customers, such as farmers, who are the engine of this economy, I mean the economy is a livelihood in terms of food uh, production as well as uh, on the commercial side. So it's always a pleasure to work with our farmers and I must admit that uh, in terms of our clientele, uh, once we plan together and we work together with the farmers, we've had no challenges with them, they are amongst the most understanding of our customers because they understand what goes into power generation, power transmission and power distribution. And uh, even when we engage with them on a regular basis, and our director, Chiti Mataka, as well as uh, several of our key workers, are in collaboration with our farmers. We also have dedicated teams that work with the farmers. Uh, that's how much we treasure our relationship with the farmers. They are critical to the country's economy, but they are also critical to the business. And uh, that's why it is in the interest of Zesco Limited to always collaborate, plan together with the farmers, and uh, even when we have uh, challenges, like we have uh, weather-induced uh, uh, power deficit, uh, we plan and work with our farmers. Because what is critical for a farmer is the ability to plan. And uh, once they're able to plan and they know that uh, power uh, distribution is predictable, then they can plan around uh, what we are able to give them as a service. So we work together and we get the feedback. And where they have challenges, they reach out. There's a platform, a WhatsApp group, as well as email platform, where we are able to engage on a constant basis 
so that they are kept abreast. If there is a challenge uh, in a particular area and we are unable to give them power at a given time, uh, they are quickly alerted and given the information that is needed. If there is an issue that is outstanding and they need to know, uh, so we, we, we are always in constant, um, uh, constant collaboration with our farmers because they are not only critical to the country's economy, they are critical also to the viability of our business. Already there are a number of investments that we've put in place moving forward so that we can become energy sufficient, you know, energy efficient, as well as uh, ensuring that we realize our vision of becoming the hub of electricity in the region. So that should be able to give our farmers that uh, the darkness that we experience now is not forever. The last word is on the hope that the investments that we've injected into the system gives us. And that hope is that uh, load shedding will continue to reduce as we move forward. And even as we move our investments with this energy mix, uh, where you have solar, you know, hydro, as well as wind and uh, thermal, uh, then we'll be moving towards a system that is balanced in terms of source, uh, but also intelligent enough to be able to offer the service on a reliable and consistent basis. But we need to collaborate and work together with our customers so that they appreciate where we are. In order for us to give a good service, there are certain things that we need. Uh, and at the same time, we implore upon our customers to be energy efficient in what they use. Because we, customers can also be uh, wasteful in the use of that energy. Uh, I'll give you examples. Uh, at a domestic level or at a farming level or at a commercial level, to maximize your profits as a business person, you also need to manage energy as a commodity. Because it's, it's you know, the people say, ah, this power is available, so we can use it. If you're not intelligent in the way you use energy, it's likely to cost you more. It's just like water. If we're not intelligent in the way we use our, we use our water resource, it turns out to be costly. So my simple uh, answer is that the argument on cost, for us as ESCO Limited, we are looking at how much does it take for us to generate, transmit and distribute that power. And we are saying we are generating it, transmitting it and distributing it at above 10 uh, cents. But we are selling it at 3 cents. Our desire is to move toward, uh, towards a cost reflexivity of uh, the tariff at some point. Then uh, there are certain initiatives that we are putting in place for our maximum, de maximum demand customers, the smart metering system, so that the control of the use of power is in the hands of the farmer. So they know how much they are consuming, and they can isolate the different uh, instruments that they use or equipment in their uh, business, so that they are able to manage that uh, energy efficiently. And uh, for now, they have to depend on Zesco probably coming in to build uh, send in people when there is a small fort, uh, drive uh, kilometers into Mukushi farming block or other. But with a smart metering system, the grid becomes visible uh, to Zesco. And when there's a problem, we'll be able to identify the problem. And then even things like billing becomes easier, but also the customer is much more in charge and in control of their own use of energy within their uh, commercial entity. Thank you very much for participating in Plenary 2 of Meet the Farmers Virtual Summit 2020. Plenary 2 was on enhancing the value chain for the agricultural sector in Zambia. You now have four workshops to attend. You can select one out of those four. On your screen shortly, you have four buttons. You can click on the particular workshop you want to attend. Alternatively, click on your agenda button on your Hoover app. It will take you to the agenda for the day and select which of the workshops you would like to participate between workshop one and workshop four. I'll see you all after the workshops to go through the evaluation for the day.
Smallholder farmers make up more than 80% of Zambia's agricultural producers, but have for years attracted little or no attention from private sector companies as potential markets for their products and services. Perpetual low crop yields and poor quality of farm produce resulting from the low utilization of modern inputs and farming practices also fall short of private sector expectations. The past few years, however, have seen a gradual shift by the private sector towards the smallholder sector. Musika, a wholly Zambian-owned non-profit company, is jointly funded by the Swedish Embassy and the UK's Department for International Development in Zambia, DFID. It works to stimulate and support private sector investment in the smallholder market and has, since 2012, facilitated sustainable and commercial linkages between the farmers and agribusinesses. Well, I mean, like working with Musika, wow, well, it has, because when Musika found us, we were uh, very, very small. Actually, at that point, we were a micro business. We now have more stuff. We even had to invest in an oil press. And so things are more efficient and more profitable since working with Musika. The experience of this partnership has bonded us to the extent that we now believe that we can do more on the ground. We are It's clear to, in our eyes as Muzuma that we have been able to, through the help of Musika, to support these people in what they're doing. It would have been very difficult, or it would have taken us many years to get there. If we had not got the support, maybe it would have taken 10 or 15 years to get there. Now with that support, we, we went straight into the activity of getting this support to the farmer, and it has directly impacted them positively. Musika's operations are national in scope and stretch across the agricultural industry. It is not bound to any commodity sector or geographical given in the flexibility to invest in any client in any sector in any region within Zambia. It's not as important to us as what the commodity or the product is that is either being sort of distributed to the farmers uh, as a sale or um, bought, so aggregated from the farmers as a, as a commodity back into the, into the uh, trading and processing sector. So for us, uh, whether it's cassava, whether it's soya, whether it's fertilizer or dairy products, that's the, the important thing for us is more about the business model that, uh, that that relationship involves, coming back to those ideas of uh, you know, embedding extension, uh, helping farmers to access inputs and finance, uh, giving the confidence of an assured market. Um, to us, that's the key. Musika identifies opportunities for investment and innovation together with its agribusiness partners and can provide grants that respond to specific requirements needed to successfully kickstart an investment by a partner. These grants are given on a cost-shared basis and come in the form of infrastructure, logistics, and equipment support meant to mitigate the risk of making initial investment in new geographies and testing new business models or new technologies by the private sector. Another form of grant support is the use of challenge funds to help stimulate growth in specific value chains or address specific constraints within the agricultural sector. Musika has been the pioneer of the agent network business model and supports the development of a dynamic last mile distribution network for seed, fertilizer, agrochemicals and farm equipment that reaches into the smallholder communities. We, we focus, uh, I guess we divide our work uh, largely into, into four sectors, um, one of which is the, the input markets. Uh, where, where we've been supporting uh, seed, agrochemical and fertilizer companies to uh, develop distribution models that, that allow farmers not only uh, access to products but also to the, to the technical information uh, around the use of those products. Our portfolio of products is really tailored around commercial farmers. And now with the 
small scale farmers coming into, into the picture. We obviously have tailor made our products to a smaller pack size and we've also focused mainly on herbicides because I think that's where the biggest impact is on, on small scale farmers. We know that there are unscrupulous people who go in the, in the communities who try to entice farmers to, to plant, to buy seed at a cheaper price and this tends to be fake seed. So we took up that challenge to make sure that uh, our, seed, uh, our seed is being used by farmers. And I think that uh, partnership or that program worked very well to a point whereby farmers, obviously we graduated them from just being uh, 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 contact farmers to being established stock dealers, uh, agro dealers. Recently, I think we went into much more complicated uh, partnership with Musika where we established our own internal extension service system. Uh, the establishment of the extension service system was one way to enhance uh, the training, uh, farmer meetings, as well as the introduction of pro our products to farmers. We also managed to secure some motorbikes from Musika and I think this came at handy at a time when we were struggling in terms of uh, outreach. And I think uh, those motorbikes, they've done great and I think we're able to stand on our feet and say let's plan with our own resources. Musika supports the development of commercial services that are key to increasing smallholder productivity. Within the livestock sector, Musika assists private veterinary companies to offer the smallholder market preventative health care and genetic improvement services at their doorstep. In the cropping sector, Musika assists agricultural equipment companies to mechanize smallholder production by offering a wide range of agricultural machinery and services aimed at promoting efficiencies in land preparation, planting, crop production, post-harvest activities, and storage. It has also assisted in lowering the risk of lending by financial institutions so as to increase access to agricultural machinery by smallholder farmers offering contracting services to others within the community. We've worked in services, the service markets, primarily around um, agricultural contracting with mechanisation. Um, but also, um, and uh, a large part of our work has also been in the development of the uh, smallholder veterinary market as well. We distribute drugs, we um, carry out vaccinations, we deworm the animals, give vitamin supplementation, uh, we also uh, do artificial insemination and also conduct some educational programs. We're able to reach far places that even the government VAs have not reached. In our case, we, we, we get the LVS to come in. As soon as we have detected a problem to one cow or one animal, then we can uh, ask LVS to come and help us detect what sort of disease this one is. And then immediately they will give us the, te the technical um, advice that they did. Ubo to buligo mbunjanji ndagabona. Kambo wanu, katu tagele pa kaita ningabo la spray list dan kinji watu pa. Katu spray ama spray. Sti wuni tu spray ya ngombe hali kudu mwanze ngini, ngombe hali kuzu mana ilakwa. Amana titwa gai hii mzezo wa prevention. Tuwa hii wabu kujita treating ngombe ya jiswa, njia asukwa mnyeleti. Ono mbuli uzwani tuwa tayo welega wa LVS. Ama prevention tuwa hii wabu, kambo tuwa hii wabu jindi budu wazi chebu chani, chebu wola. So ngombe ta hii we supply almost everything as Manzuma Estates. We supply the dip, or even for this one where we have to run it with a, with a, with a pump. Our, the pump is ours, and we've been offered all the services in partnership with Amusika. They, they gave us uh, the, 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 the spirits, and we also had to do our own part. But even the community also helped out. So we find that generally even the farmer, as you are helping them with the same, they take it as their own facility because they participated in the, the whole thing. From the time we started our dipping program, we have noticed that there has been a great change in the way farmers have understood their role in looking after their livestock. It has reduced uh, mortality of livestock, it has improved uh, uh, the farmer's capacity to have uh, better herds, better quality uh, animals, uh, due to the health conditions of the animals increasing. It has also been very good for their production and as a result in the areas where we have dipping facilities, whether it is a dip tank or a spray race, um, 
the animals in that area, those areas have increased. So in that area, we have to go now. I hope my mother will go home again. 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 I hope with Masika coming on board from, from an early on stage, they actually assisted us to, to pay a lot of focus on the small scale farmers through our interventions. And today our majority of our business is the small scale market, yes. And I think that's given us quite an edge. We don't sit behind a counter and wait for the clients to come to us. We work from the farm to, the, to basically, let's say, our retailer. Yeah, what we see in, in Zambia, in the rural areas, is that there's a lot of entrepreneurs and farmers who can grow their business, but they lack the access to the right equipment and to basically the financing to purchase that equipment to grow their business. So what we do is we offer a package of services that allows them to, to, to get the equipment that they need. We deliver it to the client's doorstep. We install it. Uh, so they can use it the same day and then we train them on basic maintenance and operations and we provide the financing. Sometimes we have to stranded Wa msika ba di tupela ko ama ground na tshela. Si onse fe tule bomba na ba farmer tule ba lenting shaka no no kasi ba tongole mbalala shabo so thati ba tule tela. We also train our farmers in village loan serving association, which helps them to contribute towards their 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 loan acquisition from some aqua facilitated by Amafian Agri. Then we also facilitate our farmers in accessing the, the, the loans because since we have trained them uh, in agricultural skills, in business skills, the market is guaranteed. The only missing element becomes the finance, uh, which we facilitate by uh, having all the farmers that come for training in conservation and business access the loan facilities from Zanaco. Musika's unique and flexible approach to reducing poverty and creating wealth in rural Zambia has contributed to creating a growing group of smallholders adopting a more commercial attitude to farming and becoming more sophisticated consumers and market-aware suppliers. Musika's interventions have resulted in over 2,500 small businesses operating within rural communities and providing critical links in the supply chain between agribusiness and smallholders countrywide. Increase the hectare and also the income has also increased because I do sell many crops now. Nali shiba, if you have a mile, Nali shiba, business if you have a shivantu. So, child in Gero Queva Tin said, Mu business, want to Nalesa Kamanaba Nakashi, Nabao. And she do a mad degree, but business in do a mad degree. Mulan do a school, the Abam speak.